Okay, guys, so I said I would come back, you know, and talk to you guys really quick. I just want to finish on that. That's like a whole subject all by itself. I was talking about um, how when I used to have extra money, I was investing it in my hobby and pretty much nothing else. All right, guys, make sure you guys are subscribed if you're not. Um, also, if you have not checked out the previous video, you can start there and that is where you'll see where we ran into this topic. So this is kind of like a part two continuation of that topic. But um, I just want to prevent some other people from making some of the mistakes that I made. And I call them mistakes, but I don't regret them. But in all actuality, it wasn't the smartest thing to do. So when I first found this hobby, I started out very low. I think the first doll I bought was like $100, you know. And, um, well, the first doll I bought was like $50. And it was a Lorna Miller Sands, little one of those little cloth body mini silicone babies. And then I was a second highest bidder on another doll, which was Walter by Laura Tudor Ross, painted by Connie Prince. And it was an um, ethnic one, uh, AA. And I got that one for like a hundred and something dollars, I think, or, you know, under $200. And so, you know, I started out in the right place, you know, and it was like I was really excited about it, et cetera, et cetera. But where I start to make the mistake at, which all of us are human, we always want more. But I started going, figuring, trying to find a way to get dolls that I just couldn't really afford. Whenever you have to find a way and figure things out and maneuver things, that really means that you really can't afford it. Not saying that you shouldn't, and I'm not judging people who do it. I'm talking specifically about my own self here in this situation. I kind of pushed myself to the limit. I, you know, I worked overtime, or if I had extra money where I used to go get my nails done or my feet done or, you know, splurge on, you know, whatever activities, I kind of cut those things out and put it in my dolls. And then it just got more and more and more and then it got to the point where I never even went to a hairstylist or anything I was doing my hair at home and stuff like that and so um I just started investing so much into my dolls and yeah my channel started growing it had nothing to do with my channel you know when I looked up I was at 2,000 subscribers and then after that I had a viral video and when that viral video went viral um I started gaining more and more people and it just it went from there. I think when I first before I got my first um Claire Teledoll, I think I eventually was I was at like about five thousand or seven thousand subscribers. So then a um Zoe went viral. Um and then it it just started, you know, going from there. Um and then I had several other viral videos. Um <clears throat> quite a bit actually that um YouTube kind of shut down so anyway um I say that to say that I wasn't buying the dolls to boost my channel I was buying the dolls because I was addicted and I I liked them and it was something that was soothing for me and I was going through a time where I was at a low and well I was kind of coming through I don't want to say I was at a low but I was going you know kind of readjusting my life you know, I just went through a divorce, et cetera, et cetera. You know, things were starting to settle and I was just feeling like I deserved a reward from all that I'd been through, blah, 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 blah. And it was kind of like, almost like I was using the dolls as a filler, like it was my reward or I don't know. So I was just like treating myself to doll after doll after doll after doll. And I was just kept saying, I deserve this and I deserve that. And before I know it, I was so deep into the hobby I mean, I looked up, I had tons of subscribers and followers, and then I had tons of dolls, and I just, you know, then I wanted more and more, and then I started meeting other artists and sculptors and talking to people, and it just, you know, everything just got bigger and bigger on a bigger scale and a bigger scale and a bigger scale, and then before I know it, I was like, like I said, it just in too deep, and I think now that I'm definitely older, at least six years older, and definitely wiser, and definitely have had some highs and lows in life um, during this time. I think that, um, and don't get me wrong, there were some times where I didn't invest all of my money, and there was times that those same very much, very expensive dolls that I had, 
Um, I sold them and remodeled one of you know my houses or you know did a lot of work and that's where I really like that's what what made me where I'm at now where I really don't have doll money like I used to is I pretty much sucked all my doll money. I sold my dolls and I didn't replace them with dolls. I sold them and I dumped that money into my house. Um, but this was kind of stuff I used to share in the chatter box before I closed it down the first time. But um, if I could do things differently and if I could give someone advice today on buying these dolls, I would first say, Kind of take your time looking and know exactly what you want. And you never probably won't know exactly exactly what you want if you don't go to doll shows and see them in person, hold them, you know, look at different artists' work before you buy. Um, so you probably are going to go through a couple. But I would be very cautious and, and very um, reluctant to just jump on the first, first thing I see um, if I could do things all over again. And I would say to people that, you know, set a limit and stick to it. Uh, as hard as it is, um, if I look back nowadays, you know, I would say a lot of that money, I wish I would have invested it in my savings account. I wish I would have invested it in my, you know, my household things that I would like to do, you know, projects around the house. Because before this hobby, decorating my home and other things like that was more of a hobby for me my kids didn't go without they had everything that i was going to give them whether i was in dolls or not and same for now gabby has everything that she needs and wants you know regardless but um now i actually do instead of like you know shopping for the dolls and stuff i'm kind of like saying mm, I could be shopping for Gabby or maybe we could just take a trip, but I don't I don't want to spend all that money, you know, throwing money at clothes and shoes and stuff like that with Gabby as well because, you know, um, children need more than materialistic things. I'd rather invest in her expanding her knowledge with, you know, um, museums and, you know, just being well-traveled and her education and stuff, you know, enhancing her talents and stuff like that and putting her in activities and things. You know, as I'm older, when I was younger with my other kids, I didn't get to do a lot of that stuff. But now I have that opportunity. And to instead of, you know, buying a $10,000 doll or $8,000 doll or $5,000 doll or even a $3,000 doll, you know, I feel like I, I have beautiful dolls. I don't need any more. And so why, why not take this time to really flourish? within myself my home and stuff like that so you know that's my perspective have changed so a lot of people may be like ah oh, she's broke she's this she's that i'm no broken than i were when i came in to be honest i was you know i'm actually a little bit better off than what i was when i first came into the hobby i was really you know less fortunate at that time but i'm just really prioritizing more so and it's it's, it's a struggle and this is why you hear me saying, gosh, I wish I had the money to buy the dolls because, you know, I look at my budget and I look at what I have to do, you know, outside of dolls. And I'm like, no, that's too tight to then turn around and t pull this money and throw it at a new doll. So I'm not talking you guys out of buying dolls. I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I'm talking from a person that's already seen a lot and already, you know, um, have beautiful dolls and I have the capability of making my own reborn. So now my thing is is that you know if i have to make a whole bunch of ball babies for myself every now and then and even with that i have to limit myself because these kids 130 dollars 140 dollars a pop adds up real quick you know so i can't even afford to make them like that for myself i don't want to do that so sometimes your priorities change but i would say you know to new people you know don't don't try to keep up with the joneses don't try to you know, um, don't make nobody feel, make you feel like you need to have this type of doll to belong or you need to have that type of doll to belong or your doll has to be from this artist or that artist in order for you to be great. You know, if you love what you have, when you get that doll and you love it and it's, it, it is satisfying enough for you, don't worry about other people because I've seen friends, I've seen people in this, in the hobby where they are just 
killing themselves to buy this name brand doll just because they feel like you know they're not gonna get likes people don't like their dolls in the groups when they post and people don't comment compliment their dolls or they want to have the popular dolls with everybody else and stuff like that. And a lot of people won't admit to that. They be like, uh, no, I don't care about what people say and stuff like that. But you know what? Sometimes it can get, it can be pressure, you know? And just like with having a YouTube channel, it, it can be pressure. Like, oh, everybody's having all these box openings and stuff like this. I don't have any box openings. What am I going to do? Well, girl, guess what? I'm telling you right now, do you. Be yourself. Do your videos. Do whatever you would do when you get a new baby okay you want to have a clothing haul okay you want to you know reveal something new a new style you want to do with your baby or something do that but just whatever you do don't go broke on these dolls because you know what these artists nowadays are getting i i'm not gonna say they're greedy but i'm gonna say that we we're driving as the consumers we're driving the prices up because we want we want the best and we'll pay anything to get it and we're so emotional about it and they know we want it and they know we'll pay it and they know somebody will pay it so therefore the prices have went up crazy and I have nothing wrong with people going up on their prices, like I said, when their quality is going up, their techniques is going up, their skill sets is going up. But when you're still losing paint, your hair is still falling out, and your prices is going up, I can, I, that's a no for me. When you're charging the same as, you know, a master artist, but your work is a beginner's level, that's a no but unfortunately for newbies that's coming in they don't know the difference because they've never seen the two side by side or anything and that's where they get the new people um a lot of artists like that prey on new people because they know the standards are way much lower than experienced collectors and they're you know they they're so happy to sell to you guys because they know that you are going to be excited with whatever they give because you have nothing to compare it, compare it to. And so, you know, with that say, being said, you know, I know I'm not a master artist. I'm painting, I'm growing each time. And that's why, you know, people have told me, oh, you, you need to charge more for your dolls and stuff like, no, I don't. My skill set is not, I, I probably could, you know, if I want to be like, if I want to work on ego and be like, oh, so-and-so is charging this same amount for her dolls and those dolls are just like blah, you know what I mean? I could, I could, base, based off of that, I could say, oh yeah, let me go and charge more. Or they can't reach this skin tone, so I'm gonna charge more. No, I'm charging what I feel like is fair. I charge what I feel like, I feel like what I put out is fair to the price and so, you know, if I can, if it, if it still remains good enough for me, as long as it remains good enough for me, I plan to keep my prices there. I can't say that if I become, girl, now nah, if I start paying like Houdini up in this mug, y'all better be, psh, get your coins together, girl. We're going to be doing another type video, like, girl, buy this baby, Ugh. you know, <laughs> but no, but right now I just want to keep my prices right where they're at for the most part i enjoy what i do it's a hobby and it's kind of like you know extra income when i do sell and make a profit um sometimes i don't make a profit believe it or not sometimes i don't when i you know but nevertheless like i said just be careful as you invest and don't just run out and buy something because somebody tell you that that you should you know do your research see what if you see a lot of them going up for sale and if they are a lot of them going up for sale are they actually selling or are they sitting there for months and months and months and a year you know <clears throat> you know that makes a difference too um you know and you want and why you want to care about that is because one day you will probably more than likely 90 percent of the people end up selling one day or needing to sell and you don't want to be that one person that's holding that doll for six months or ended up getting frustrated and selling it for 50 to 60 percent sometimes even 75 percent of what you paid 
Um, reborns, I can tell you straight up, the value drops tremendously regardless of how great the doll is, period. And especially if it's not a popular sculpt or a popular artist, you know, type thing. Um, or a limited, very limited, a true limited edition um, sculpt. So all those things play in a part with that. But um, silicone babies usually will sell. You can sell a one-eye silicone baby probably for about $2,000 just because it's silicone. And if, you, <laughs> but anyway, and if it's got hair and edges, girl, forget it, girl. You and you winning. You finna get $2,500, get that baby a good, nice plastic guy, and you ready. But, you know, reborns, not so much. And I hate to say this, but um, unless you're dealing with top of the line artists that's selling their dolls for, you know, car prices and stuff like that. If it's a Caucasian baby, you're going to struggle even harder and it's going to take longer and they pay less because it's m way more beautiful, brand new Caucasian baby reborns than it is ethnic. Um, in reborns, ethnic babies sell quicker and faster, especially if they have hair. But in silicone, it's kind of like flip-flop. The uh, Caucasian baby sell faster, better, and the AA baby sell slower and lesser sometimes. Sometimes. Just depends. Now, if it's from a really popular artist, of course, it's really not that. It, you, those the, the whole scenario kind of changes. And I don't want to get into all the dynamics of that. But um, this is just from years of watching the stock market. <laughs> If you want to call it that, the doll stock market. But um, if you want to pick my brain and you want to talk about it, join the chat box because it might be one of the topics that I kind of get into when we do our lives. So um, talk to you guys later. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the in the box. I, I take everybody seriously, you know, and what you have to say in the comment section. And I love you guys and I hope that you be great and know that you're great. Don't let nobody make you feel any less than. I don't care if you're rocking with an Ashton Drake or a Walmart Bergen doll. Um, do you, baby. You know, laugh with your money in your bank account. You know, hey, they may be like, oh, your baby is plastic looking. Your baby look fake. You only paid $250 for your doll. If you ain't paid over 1000 you ain't winning. Listen, honey, you winning because guess what? That other 800 is sitting in your bank account. And where is theirs? <laughs> okay. Got them. 